This is the okay. Resilient Disciples podcast powered by Awana. I'm Ross. You know who you are. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here today. I am thrilled to welcome Dave and Jess from Doorpost Songs to the podcast. Welcome, Dave and Jess. Good to see you both. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Good to be hello. Here. Thanks, Ross. Um, so I want to jump in. You guys are two of my new favorite artists. And one of the uh. reasons is that um you know, we have a conversation around Awana all the time about the difference between child discipleship and sort of kids ministry, which can often, I would say, devolve into child care. And <laughs> I can't carry a tune in a bucket, but I know that I have enough musical friends in my life to know that, you know, you can put the right song together. You can, you know, have catchy lyrics and good music and you have a pretty entertaining song. But with y'all do and if you've never heard of Dor dorpo songs please check out the show notes there's going to be links everywhere so you can check out their stuff um you all make your music your ministry and it's really centered around discipleship was that always what you guys were doing i imagine you knew you know you guys have a different uh, relationship to music than i do but how have you continued to make discipleship the center of all of your work Wow. Yeah. It's sort of evolved over the years. You know, Dave used to be in a Christian rock band. So, <laughs> and, um, but we, uh, we began serving at churches and then it all started when a children's minister actually came to Dave and said, Hey, I've got this, this scripture. Could you write a song to help us memorize it? And then it's almost like from that moment forward, um, Dorpo songs was grown and evolved into what it is right now. And, um, it's really amazing when you can take a passage of scripture and make it into a really fun song. That's super memorable. Like music yeah. just sticks with you in a different kind of way. And, um, it's fun for us as musicians to create music that, you know, our kids are really excited about kids are excited to sing along with. Um, but yeah, why don't you piggyback onto that? Well, yeah, I, I think I've always had, I've always had trouble writing songs that, um, you know, there, there's room for just great, beautiful art, you know, that yeah. even just art that is beautiful, that has no other purpose besides that art, you know, that still reflects the heart of God. But totally. for me, I have always felt like, um, I have trouble writing a song whose only purpose is the song itself. And so I have always wanted to marry great art with, um, a, a higher purpose. And yeah. so, when we started jumping in and working on these songs um, that were all coming right out of God's word, um, we realized pretty quickly, like, okay, there's this, there's this pr sort of shallow level purpose, which is like, well, let me just memorize this verse. But then you start asking why, why in the world, why should I care about memorizing this verse? Why should I care about God's word? And then you realize that God's word is the center of our faith. It's the center of discipleship. And so it starts unlocking all these doors to uh, something greater. Yeah, totally. I mean, y'all just made the Awana crowd super happy. Uh, talking about that. <laughs> no, but I mean, we've, I think a lot of the work that I do in this podcast is sort of perception correction about Awana, right? Where mm -hmm. people hear about, a, you know, a lot of people know what Awana is, or at least they think they do, where it's like, oh, yeah, that's like they memorize scripture and run into polls, right? <laughs> but the ability to center on, you know, actually putting God's word in our heart and the work of, of associated with that, and y'all provide such a useful tool for that. But what's so clear to me in just the little bit I have learned about you guys in preparing for this conversation is that this, the fact that you guys are musicians is almost coincidence. Like you guys, this would be your heart. This would be your ministry if you two were accountants, which would be weird, but you would, you'd rock it just the same. <laughs> when you guys came, you know, you guys have essentially developed a family ministry here, right? This is something that y'all are doing. I know your kids are involved. Now people listening aren't necessarily musicians, but there's a lot of people listening who are in family ministry essentially, right? How do you balance this sort of outward discipleship focus and helping other kids with, you know, being parents and being busy and the sort of the day-to-day -day work associated with uh, trying to follow Jesus in 2021? Well, we're working on it. Yeah, it's like, if you have some ideas, <laughs> yeah. let us know. Yeah, uh -huh. I think it's, it's um, you never go on autopilot 
right? Like it's never a thing where you're like, okay, well, we'll find this balance and it'll just stay there. Yeah. Um, I think it's this continual finding of balance, this continual making decisions. We don't get to go on autopilot and find this little comfortable place uh, to be because our first ministry is our kids, right? We, we have the privilege of raising our three kids or ages 11, nine, and seven, and in all of their stages with all of their very different personalities. <laughs> um, and then we also have this privilege of of serving in a church alongside each other, of, of creating this music and, and supporting other churches and other ministries. And so it's a continual balancing act. Um, but I think that our eyes just have to be locked on Jesus all the time. Like it comes back to sitting with him and sh- letting him show us, okay, where, where is our time need to be spent today? Or, okay, all these tasks are on our list, you know, whether it be family tasks combined with ministry tasks, how do we even go about this in a way that that honors uh, both of these ministries? Obviously, our family is continually coming first. Um, we also have really supportive grandparents. Yeah. They are just as much as, as much a part of this ministry as as anyone. Um, and without them, we couldn't do what we do. And I think that that's um, that's enabled us, and especially um, you know, as the mom, it's enabled me to to come alongside Dave and serve in a way that that would feel almost impossible without them also joining us in this ministry. Sure. Yeah. I think practically too, it, it means that we don't, well, one of the practical things is it, is it, we don't do everything we could. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you're trying to balance, you know, ministry and family and one of them, you know, if, if for instance, what usually happens is that ministry keeps winning Yep. Like if, if ministry always wins, then you're not balancing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we are fortunate that, um, we have, you know, grandparents that are, that are very involved. And so when we do have to step away, it's still family time. That's pretty cool. Totally. Um, and, um, and then we don't do everything we could. There are things that we say no to, um, because the, you know, the family has to come first. Um, the other really, I think, blessing is that, um, is getting to do it together, you know, ministry can separate, you know, um, couples, you know, because if one's in, in a specific ministry and one is not, you know, involved, um, that's an easy way for couples to get separated. Mm -hmm. Whereas for us, because we're doing it together, it ends up bringing us together. And so some of the really cool time we get just the two of us is when we're going out and we're doing a conference or we're going out and we're, we're doing a family worship event. Yeah. Um, that's a really cool blessing um, that we, I know we're really grateful for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for sure. And I think it's important for folks, you know, like just to lay it out really plainly, right. People who are listening, they're, they're trying to stay focused on discipleship, but they also got to make sure the snack cabinet is full for Sunday. Right. <laughs> and what I hear in what you guys are saying is the snack cabinet can wait until Sunday morning, like to make sure that the things that are biblically mandated of us to make sure that the things that are the, the important things stay the important things. And I think it's so easy, especially now where there's so much noise and voices for people to get distracted. And I love that you guys are able to stay connected in, you know, the whole family ministry, grandparents included. Yeah. Um, the, the place I want to take things to is, you know, we're in a series of conversations that are focused on just worship and spiritual formation. And I'm going to preface this by saying there is no right answer to this question. But <laughs> when I feel like spiritual formation has become this term that sort of popped up into the zeitgeist and it can quickly become this thing where it's like, I don't even know what that means. So you guys are engaged in helping churches worship, helping families worship, but that is also a process of spiritual formation. I'm curious how you guys begin to define worship and how you define spiritual formation, because I think it's helpful for folks who are listening to know how folks like y'all make those distinctions and where they overlap. Well, so I guess the the first place that I go when I think about spiritual formation is uh, Romans 8, 29, where it talks, Romans 8, 28 is a a verse we all love, um, for God, for in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. 
And then verse 29 answers what his purpose is. And his purpose is that we would be conformed to the image of his son. So when I think about um, spiritual formation, that's the first thing I think of that we're being conformed to the image of his son. And so how then do we do that? Um, I am convicted that if we don't make worship a significant part of our discipleship process, all we have are rules and we're trying to follow a bunch of rules and that's legalism, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's Pharisaism. Um, <laughs> and, and that's not the gospel, but the, the definition of worship that I often give people, and it's not complete, um, but it's, I think a good starting point is that worship is our loving response to God's loving action. And we do that, you know, we experience his action through his presence, through his spirit and through, uh, through the word of God. That's where we experience his action in our lives. And then how do we respond? We respond in prayer. We respond in praise. We respond in obedience. And all of those things are aspects of worship. Um, the, the illustration that I, I think from scripture is really apt to that is Luke seven, where Jesus goes to the house of Simon, the Pharisee, and uh, Simon has created this dinner. All of his friends are there. I think, you know, based on the actions, I think Simon's pretty excited to show off Jesus to his friends. And they're also trying to kind of gauge who this Jesus guy is. Yeah. And then um, the Bible says a sinful woman, we don't really know who it is, but the Bible says a sinful woman comes in and she starts weeping over Jesus' feet. And she starts drying his feet with her hair. And it's very scandalous. Simon is uh, pretty upset about this because this woman is kind of ruining his big moment. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so, um, you know, this happens all the time in the gospels where somebody's thinking something and then the, the gospel will be like, and Jesus knowing what he was thinking, you know, it's like, it's really dangerous. Yeah. If you're going to be thinking something around Jesus, like he's going to know <laughs> what's going on. Um, and so he tells Simon this parable of the, of the two debtors, one owed the master a little bit, one owed the master a lot. And both debts were forgiven. And he asked him this rhetorical question, well, which loved the master more? And Simon's very smart. And he knows it's the one who's been forgiven. And, and then Jesus says, you know, this woman, you know, I walked into your house and you didn't even wash my feet, which you should have done. Right. But she's washed my feet. You didn't even give me a kiss, which Simon should have done in that culture, but she hasn't stopped kissing my feet. You know, she says, he says that she has been forgiven, at, forgiven much as her great love has shown. And so I look there at these two examples. We have this sinful woman and the Pharisee, and both of them were in the presence of Jesus. Hmm. But who would we characterize as the disciple? Well, it's the woman. And who was the worshiper? What was the woman? And I think we That's were a lot, true. I'm convicted about the fact that I, in, I come into the presence of God so often like Simon. I mean, think about that. Like Simon had Jesus right there in his house and he had not for a moment worshiped. And that, that's a danger, especially for those of us who are in um, regular uh, ministry, you know, every week we're doing, we're, we're doing something and we would come into the, the presence of God and be more like Simon the Pharisee than like this sinful woman. Um, and so that's our prayer that we first starting with us, that we want to be like that woman who fell at the feet of Jesus, who understood that she was forgiven, who understood God's action in her life and then responded lovingly. And it's that so then carries into uh, discipleship. And that's our prayer for, um, for families and for kids. That's so good, man. Um, cause that's actually where I want to take things next, which is, you know, more on the ground of what y'all do every day, because I imagine, and like I said, I don't know, uh, if the day I'm a worship leader better be, uh, uh, some point after uh, Revelation and the Rapture, because <laughs> for the sake of the church. But the, I imagine a scary place to be is leading people in worship and realizing you yourself are not worshiping. 
and y'all are able to lead family ministry events. Y'all are able to go to churches. You obviously have plenty of resources that I would love for people to check out again via the show notes um, that can help churches and families, et cetera. But I'm curious when you are leading worship, you guys are talented musicians. How do you stay in the presence of mind to continue that as an act of worship yourselves rather than make it a performance? Because I think for folks who are listening, you may not be singing in front of your church, but it, that same rule applies when you're helping kids in a small group setting or even doing game time within the context of Awana. How do you worship while leading worship? Right. Well, we've said before that there's nothing unspiritual about great preparation. So, you know, getting up there and, and knowing what's going on and, and knowing the music and having put in your time so that that's not where your mind is in that moment. And in that's that good. moment, you've, you've come prepared, you know, you know, where the worship set is going. So in that moment, I mean, just for me, just speaking personally, I'm just continually praying and it's nothing like, it's nothing special. It's, you know, it's just, you know, asking Jesus just to continually come, continually work through this moment, um, work through this music, um, and that we can just work as encouragers, um, mm -hmm. that, that are, are, are seeing us and we can encourage them in their worship, how we are responding. And, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a mental battle, right? Like when we head into worship, it's heading into battle where we're battling it out. Maybe the morning went off the rails, right? Yeah. Like I've got the three kids, the back of the minivan, like for some reason, I think every parent could say there's something different about Sunday morning. And that's because <laughs> we're taking our babies to church, right? Yeah. God's enemy doesn't want us taking our babies to church, but we're bringing them there. And, and, and we got to battle that out in yeah. worship and, and, and choosing to, you know, the, the, the words that we're singing, the things that we're proclaiming in that moment, choosing that for ourselves and just, and just knowing and trusting that God's spirit is at work, no matter, like if we had a great morning or not, doesn't matter. It's on Amen. him. We don't have to be the Holy spirit. He's the Holy spirit. We just have to show up in obedience and to show up with a heart that says, I don't, this is not my kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. I don't serve my little baby kingdom and get up on my little baby throne, <laughs> right? Like I, this is your kingdom and we want your kingdom to come. We want you, we want your hands and feet to be seen. And we want people to walk into a worship experience and be encouraged with whatever they're walking in with, right? Nobody comes in at just a hundred percent every week, having had a great week at work or a, a you know thrilling weekend a really restful time mm -hmm. um but just trusting that we have a helper we have the holy spirit that's going to work in and through us and just allowing ourselves to get out of the way and just receive what he has yeah amen yeah i i think um just adding to that that um we have to get away from equating worship with a particular feeling because a lot of times that's what we mean when we're saying, when we're talking about how like, oh man, I just, I just had trouble worshiping today. What we really mean is I wasn't feeling the same, the way I, the way that I have normally felt. And we, so in saying that we're not rejecting feelings as an important part of worship. No, our emotions, every emotion that was given to us was designed to be used for God's purposes. So he yeah. made them on purpose for us to feel them. So we, we embrace that. However, we shouldn't equate worship with those feelings. And it would be a little bit like, you know, if you uh, said to a heart surgeon, well, um, you know, was the transplant successful? And the heart surgeon said, well, I didn't really feel like, <laughs> I didn't really feel like, I didn't yeah. feel the same as I did, you know, uh -huh. right? Because I remember uh, um, uh, speaking with, um, uh, Alyssa Childers, um, and, um, talk her, her question, her first question about worship is always, was God worshiped today? And that's a very different question than did I feel the right way? Yeah. Sometimes worship is the best we can do is just obedience. Mm. Sometimes we don't have the, the wonderful feelings. Yeah. Um, but obedience is still worship. Amen to that. Well, and that to me connects back to discipleship right? Like I think about the seasons of my life where I was in a very healthy place of discipleship and you don't necessarily feel the uh, retreat 
spiritual high that you're when you're in that. But then when you're not in a season like that, you feel empty. You feel the lack of those things. And I think similarly, what again stands out to me about y'all's music is it really not only centers, it's not only deeply biblical and centers God, God's word, but it centers the music as a tool for discipleship. Now, there's a lot of people listening who would love to uh, have a more dynamic worship experience in the context of their church. And I'm curious when y'all are going to, y'all are out on tour, going to different events um, in the context of church. My guess is you've had experiences where folks come up to you and they're like, hey, how do I do that? But when you're not here. <laughs> and I think about, you know, so many people are listening where they have large group time where there's kids and they're really struggling to figure out a way to connect with kids in this experience, this experience that is a fundamental tool in our relationship with Jesus. How do you begin to maybe I'll use the phrase shift a culture mm -hmm. to be more centered around the kind of worship that you guys experience each and every week? If at the moment it feels sort of stale, what sort of words of encouragement can we give to a listener who's in that context right now? Yeah, I, th I think first of all, there's, um, the first thing that I would say is that there's nothing that we have done through doorpost songs or through the church where we serve that requires a particularly special talent to replicate. Mm -hmm. um, I think generally, this is obviously painting with a broad brush, but what most people lack is not talent, but rather perseverance. Mm -hmm. And we want those three or four easy steps and then everything to be great. And that's just, I mean, where in your life does that work? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so nowhere. And why, nowhere. why would worship be any different? So I do think the, the, as just a general rule, if you want to be serious about your worship mm. culture, you got to be serious about it over an extended period of time with concerted, persistent effort. That's good. Um, and then I do think that there are some principles that we can apply. Um, for many people, it's taking a step from um, putting on videos for kids to leading with people. One of the things that we talk about a lot um, is that videos don't lead worship. People lead worship. Um, so that's that could be a great first step for a lot of people is just finding a way to have some people up there. Um, they might be musicians, they might be hand motion leaders, whatever they are, people lead worship, not videos. Um, I think a second thing that's important is to take kids seriously as worshipers. So we love having fun with kids. You know, I mean, we, I mean, our, many of our songs are upbeat and energetic, um, but there is a danger in that because the kids start getting excited about that. Now we just start thinking, well, what I need is to just put on the entertaining fun song that gets kids excited. That's not yeah. taking kids seriously as worshipers. That's just trying to entertain them and yeah. elicit a particular response out of them. If we take kids seriously as worshipers, then we also, then we have to think about, you know, the content of what we're putting in front of them. We have to think about um, their, the emotions that we're allowing them to feel in relation to God, in relation to worshipers, are, or in relation to worship. There are times when we might need to feel sadness. There are times when we need to um, feel the majesty of God, when we need to stand in awe. And there are times when we need to be silent, when we need to be quiet. So all of these things um, are part of taking kids seriously as worshipers and not just trying to entertain them. Um, so uh, and then I guess the third piece is that we have always, uh, and particularly in these last few years, we've really cared about uh, specifically raising up um, students, uh, older students as leaders and yeah. starting that from, uh, you know, from a pretty young age. Um, that is a really effective way, I think, to lead kids in worship. Start getting those fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth high schoolers, start getting those people involved. Um, 
in whether that's leading hand motions, whether that's singing, they might be playing guitar or playing another instrument, um, but see how we can get those people involved. That can also really help. Yeah, our own son, who is a sixth grader this year, he joined the tech team. And so he's in the back of the room. He's running sound for the children's ministry worship time. And um, he's not one that wants to get on stage. He doesn't want to sing. He doesn't want to, to be in the front, but he really loves being in the back. And I think that um, kids want to contribute. They And yeah. when they start taking ownership of that time and of that space, um, they realize that they're really important to that, that their participation is is really important and that they too can be leaders among their own peers and in just building those relationships with the kids in our ministries, showing them that they're really important to us mm -hmm. and what they have to say and what they think about God and, and what they think God is showing them. We want to hear about those things. Um, but um, just the, building those trust relationships um, in, in that context and letting them know that they can participate and that God wants them to participate. I think that's huge. Totally. Well, and I think you know, we talk about child discipleship in this three B philosophy of helping kids belong, which is highly relational, which your music does believe deeply scriptural, which your music is. But this third piece become, that is what you're talking, y'all are talking about, right? Where you are yeah. empowering kids in leadership positions, which is so crucial because the church that my kids, your kids, the kids of anybody listening um, are going to come into is an entirely different church context, an entirely different worldly context than anything we've experienced. So we better equip them now to lead in a space like that because uh, they're gonna be, they're gonna need to be heavy hitters by the time they are uh, ready for it. So where I wanna land the plane here is there are people who are listening who had not heard of you guys at all and now are super fans. And I'm curious, <laughs> you know, we've talked about your ministry in sort of like super broad strokes, but I wanna make sure people know the different ways that y'all can help do some of the things that we've talked about, help with discipleship, help with creating a, uh, changing a culture of worship. So for folks who are listening, they've gone to your website, where should, you know, what is the best way for somebody to support your kind of ministry? Well, I think I would start actually with a passage of scripture that we reference a lot, which is Isaiah 55. Um, and it's a really beautiful promise. Um, there's this kind of extended analogy where Isaiah says, just as the rain and the snow don't come down from heaven and return to it without watering the ground. I'm giving you the Dave Ray version here. This is a slight paraphrase <laughs> without watering the ground yeah. and causing food to grow so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So it is with my word. It will not return to me empty, but will achieve the purpose for which I sent it. And that is an incredible promise that we really rest on because it tells us that God takes responsibility for his word. So if we will make that word like bread to us, that we will make it what nourishes us. And that is a daily part of our lives. If we'll do that, he will be responsible for the outcome. So I say all that to say, um, the first way it, that, that we hope people are engaged is just by hearing the songs, because when they're hearing the songs, they're hearing the word of God. They're, they're, they're doing what that verse says, making, making God's word a part of their everyday life, and they're placing themselves under that promise. And that's a pretty awesome place to be. Um, and so our music is, you know, you can find it on our website, you can find it on Spotify, you can find it on Apple Music and Amazon and all those wonderful places. Uh, Doorpost songs is what you search for and you'll find all of it. Um, the kind of second piece of the puzzle are church resources. Yep. And so um, we, uh, so we're worship leaders uh, vocationally, as opposed to children's leaders. And so it's important to us to create all the resources that worship leaders use, because we want these songs to be able to be led in all of the contexts at a church. So yep. you, there are charts on our website, there are, there are stems, there are tracks and all of the, all of the things, all the resources that worship leaders need. And if you um, don't know there, what those things are, someone in your church does. And yeah, that's right. That Doorpost. That's door right. Door yeah. You know, so, so that children's choirs can use them and multi-generational mm -hmm. services. And um, there are then videos because we know that that's a big part 
of uh, all of our worship services now, and especially in our in children's worship. Those of you yeah. that have, you know, children's worship service, and so lyric videos, hand motion videos, and tutorials so that your leaders can learn uh, all of the all of the hand motions to everything. And um, so the videos are there on our website as well. And then so the good. third piece is family resources because we recognize that the scriptural call to pass faith down from generation to generation is first to the family. Um, and so really as church workers, our primary job is equipping, training, supporting those families, because the family is where that transmission of faith happens. And so we uh, create family worship guides for our albums that um, help parents open God's word with their kids, um, connect with the song. And then there's you know, a moment of devotion, a moment to some questions to talk about God's word, some things to pray about. Um, so it's a very simple but easy way that parents can start engaging their kids um, and having a moment of worship at home. Fantastic. Thank you both for being here so much. Thank you guys for your ministry sincerely. Mm -hmm. I think what I so appreciate about what y'all do is you can do what I did this morning which is listen to y'all while you're taking the kids to school. You can be in a church context where y'all are able to really equip a church to do the things we talked about on the episode. And you can do, you know, family devotions. Uh, if your church is, you know, still meeting virtually, you can figure out a way to be more involved in a worship process and not do the thing that I did at the beginning of COVID, which is just be like, man, I hope somebody else teaches you about music, right? Like <laughs> you can be more present as a parent um y'all yeah. make it very easy and accessible to engage the, um with jesus this kind of way so i can't thank you enough uh for your ministry and your work and uh, it was just a real pleasure to get to know y'all thank you guys for being absolutely. here. absolutely same thank you yeah thank we you so much we love awana we believe in what you guys are doing our kids love awana and uh, so yeah really real pleasure to be here and people that want to find us can go to doorpostsongs.com um and at doorpost songs on all the social media platforms and things. Perfect. Y'all are great, man. Oh my goodness. Um, a lot of folks are going to love you, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, so really quickly, just a couple of like housekeeping things before I let y'all go. Yeah. So first of all, um, I will just respond in that email thread with any sort of like information, making sure I got like okay. websites, right. And you know, I want to make sure people have, I meant what I said, I want to make sure people have multiple different ways to access y'all because I think mm -hmm. I, I came to Awana two years ago um, and I came to the Lord in college. So I completely missed the whole family ministry space to use a silly industry term. Um, <laughs> but y'all stand out to me in the way that you have made scripture the center but also scripture the point. And I mm -hmm. think, um, I, you know, my gifting is talking into this thing. So I want to make sure that I can amplify that as much as possible. Um, secondarily, just, you know, however is easiest for y'all to send over your audio. Um, we, Awana has every possible digital platform for storage <laughs> that you can imagine. So Box, <laughs> Google Drive, whatever makes most sense for y'all. Yeah. And then, um, Lastly, so what we typically do is we will throw up the full video on YouTube. We don't promote it. It's purely to build a YouTube archive um, mm -hmm. as we build out our team so that like I'm a one man shop right now. If you ever listen to the credits <laughs> of the podcast, it's like it's mixed, edited, produced, hosted, cut. Um, <laughs> right? So I'm trying to we're, we're looking for a different person. So if you all know anybody, we're looking for <laughs> uh, but uh they, you know, we're going to be able to do more with that YouTube in the future. I may pull a couple of things you guys said um, just for social clips, but I'll send that over to y'all just to make sure That's you great. get thumbs up um, before that happens. And also so that you know about it so you can share it yourselves. Yeah, we love um, that. And then I feel like I had something else, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. So I'm going to just say <laughs> that that's it. But seriously, thank you guys so much for being here. This was fan a fantastic way to start my day. So uh, awesome. really same. It. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Ross. Awesome. I will uh, talk to you guys soon. All right. Bye. Take See care. You.